It has been just about nine months since I first took delivery of my 2022 long range Tesla Model Y. And boy, oh boy, do I have a lot of thoughts to share in this video because things have gotten way better and some way worse. Now, the car is incredible, make no mistake about it. I love driving it. I love so many things about this Model Y, but I do have some problems and I have some big regrets that you should know about because the last thing I want you to do is make my same big and expensive mistakes so uh, you don't fall into the same traps with your Tesla that I did with mine. So let me be a cautionary tale and break down everything I love and hate about my 2022 long range Model Y. Let me tell you why this is the best car on the road and why I think you should definitely get one if you're considering it. And also some of the problems I've had and how the experience has gotten a little worse over time and also a really expensive mistake I made that um, I'm going to regret for years to come. Trust me, don't make my mistake. And a big thanks to Cometeer for sponsoring this video. So the actual process of getting this car from the beginning was, suffice it to say, a saga. I'll leave a link to the video I made about this down below. There was a lot of drama back and forth on the car was ready, the car wasn't ready. I was having uh, my first child, a daughter, literally at the same time. So it was always a question of what will come first, the car or the baby? Spoiler alert, baby came first. And um, it was uh, a lot of back and forth with Tesla to actually get the car. But once I got it and I got to drive it, I've got to tell you right off the bat, I absolutely love so many things things about the Model Y. And to give you a little bit more on the details here, I picked this up in January of 2022. This is a December made Model Y of 2021, and it's got the long range uh, battery inside. It's got the red paint, which was an extra addition. I'll talk more about that in a moment. I also opted for the larger 20 inch wheels, which is also an extra addition. I went for the black interior, no FSD, no enhanced autopilot since that wasn't an option at the time. And I didn't have to buy a wall connector because luckily I was able to get that included with my car before the announcement of that whole drama and the whole switch away from it so I was good in that situation. It was like not that different from the Model 3. It shares a lot of the same DNA, but it's different enough being a little bit higher off the ground. You get that extra cargo space, uh, some other little creature comforts you only get in that model that really make this my favorite Tesla. And uh, out of the Model 3 and Model Y, I uh, am definitely team Model Y, and I've just been absolutely loving this car for the last nine months. And you can watch plenty of other videos here on YouTube that go over the specs um, in terms of the size and the leg room and the cabin noise and stuff like that. I will leave that to better Tesla professionals and better Tesla YouTubers than I am. But in this video, I wanted to go over some of the drama. I want to talk about some of the mistakes I've made, some of the issues I've had with the car, and sort of my biggest lessons learned over the last nine months on whether or not uh, you should get it and also what you should look out for if you're buying a Model 3 or specifically a Model Y. Um, there's been a lot of good stuff and a lot of bad stuff. So let me tell you about some of my uh, issues and some of my biggest regrets. So first I wanna talk for just a minute about the red paint and the bigger wheels, specifically on the Model Y. I guess the red in general applies to the three and the Y. Is it worth the extra $2,000 for this multi-coat red paint? And in my opinion, it is. I do not regret this for a second. This is one thing that I wanted to do when I had my three and I just didn't do it. And uh, when I got the Y, I decided I wanted to go all in with the red paint and I absolutely love it. And as you can see here, as the car locks, uh, it's really dirty. I haven't washed this car in a few weeks. So if you want to get a sense of how it looks when the car is a little dirty, here is what it looks like. I mean, if you go up close, you can see that uh, the car has seen uh, some cleaner days, especially here on the front. But if we just sort of take a, a wider look, you could see that it looks really good. You can see there, I definitely need to clean it, but uh, car is looking really, really nice. I love the red paint. If you are on the fence about it, I would definitely recommend it if you can swing it, uh, because in my opinion, it is so worth it. And I love the look of the red Model Y. As far as the wheels go, um, I know that some people say that this leads to a less comfortable ride experience, these 20 inch uh, induction wheels over the Gemini wheels, but I like them a lot. Um, obviously, I think that a lot of people are getting them for the looks. You're sort of getting that black on whatever color you have combo, especially the red with the black I'm a fan of. Um, I haven't really done a lot of extensive testing in a 19 inch equipped Model Y, so I couldn't give you a direct comparison, but to me, uh, it doesn't feel bumpy. I think the suspension in these newer cars is pretty good, especially, uh, specifically newer Teslas, and uh, I am okay with it. So if you're curious about the paint and the wheels, I think it's a great combo, and um, no complaints on my end with my car. 
Okay, before we continue with more on my Model Y saga and my regrets, let's take a break for just a moment because I want to tell you guys about legitimately one of my new favorite companies of all time, making what is one of my new favorite products of all time. Coffee lovers, listen up. This one is for you to get very excited about. I know I'm excited. I know you guys are going to love this. And it is an amazing product made by this video's sponsor, Cometeer. Now, if you are a fan of coffee like I am, then you are going to absolutely love Cometeer because they're offering ultra delicious coffee that is flash frozen at the peak of freshness and conveniently delivered right to your doorstep each and every month. And you can easily make and enjoy this coffee in a variety of ways in under a minute. It's so easy, it's so convenient, and let me tell you, Cometeer coffee, it's so, so delicious. And the process of actually making a Cometeer coffee is super simple. You keep these in your freezer until you're ready to make one so they're super fresh, and then pull it out when you're ready to make your drink. In my case, I have one that's been in the fridge overnight to sort of melt down because today we're making an iced coffee. I've got some ice in this glass. Next, I'm gonna add some water. Water. Then I'm going to pour in my super fresh and delicious Cometeer coffee from its recycled capsule. And that's it. Tastes amazing. Was super easy to make. It is so smooth. And again, I don't know what it is the Cometeer is doing, but this coffee, I kid you not, just tastes so, so good. With Cometeer, you're getting monthly shipments of this amazing coffee delivered right to your door. And with just a couple of simple clicks, you can customize your box based on your coffee preferences. So medium roast, dark roast, light roast, decaf, Cometeer has got an excellent variety of options that I know you guys are going to love. So trust me, now is the time to try Cometeer for yourself and uh, revolutionize your coffee experience today. And for a limited time, you can get $20 off each of your first two orders. It's a total of $40 of savings by using my special code Robert R at Cometeer.com. I love Cometeer. I know you guys are going to love it as well. And if you've been wanting to try Cometeer, now is the perfect time. So again, check out my special savings today and my special link. All that info is, of course, right down below in the description. Okay, next, let's talk drama. Let's talk problems. What problems have I had with this car in the last nine or so months? Have I had any fatal issues? The answer to that is no. I have two issues right now I'm facing. One that I've had since delivery day that I'm finally going to get addressed with a service appointment coming soon. And then a new one here. Let me show you the new one that happens infrequently. And that is I've got sort of a sticky trunk where sometimes the trunk doesn't want to close all the way. I don't know if there's some residue build up. I make sure that this area here is clear. Obviously, I need to clean this, but it's not just as this happens before this got all dirty. Uh, sometimes the trunk just sticks. So I don't know if it maybe needs a little bit of lubrication or whatever it is, but usually it'll happen when I open the car. It just uh, won't go all the way, but it's an infrequent issue. As you can see here, it's working just fine. Obviously, if I came down here and cleaned this up, which I will do after this video, uh, it should help. But uh, I've had it happen just over the last few months when that has been clean uh, infrequently. So that's one of the issues. And the other issue is on the inside, it's a little bit more annoying. And that I think is a very common issue. And that is an issue with this speaker, this uh, pillar speaker right here, that I have a distorted audio that if I'm playing podcasts, especially spoken word, it's very prevalent at about 50% or more. This speaker here sounds distorted and muffled and overmodulated. I'm not an audio expert, so I can't describe it any better than that, but it sounds like it sounds like this. It just, it sounds like something is wrong and it only happens with certain songs. It's like some kind of frequency thing I got to imagine. And um, it's only this speaker and it's this speaker right here because when I'm driving, it is very apparent and very annoying. And I've had this since day one when I first got the car, I noticed it. Apparently I looked uh, online uh, with the wonderful Tesla community and it seems to be a very common problem. So I have a service appointment. I'll give you an update on that coming soon. Um, they were, uh, Tesla was interested to see how they could reproduce it, but uh, like I said, it seems like an issue, uh, specifically with that speaker. Uh, besides that though, no issues. Frunk is all good. I've had no issues with the wheels, with any of the cameras. Everything has been in tip top shape and I have been a very big fan. So no issues, two thumbs up from me. Model Y is doing really well. All right, now let's talk regrets. What is probably my single biggest regret uh, with this car was accepting delivery of this Model Y in 2022 when there was technically like this refresh 2022 model coming up. Basically, Tesla does a lot of weird things with their naming conventions. I have technically a 2022 
uh, year Model Y made at the end of 2021, but it's missing a lot of the big 2022 upgrades that are on most Model 3s and specifically Model Ys on the road today. For example, the 2022 Model Ys have the Ryzen processor. They've got the double pane back windows. They've got heated wipers and a new lithium ion battery and some other stuff in there as well, but those are the major things. Uh, my car doesn't have any of that. It does not have uh, all of those extra creature comforts and extra goodies that are now standard with cars. And I could forget the heated wipers and the lithium ion battery. I'm in SoCal, so the heated wipers isn't a huge deal for me. But what is a big deal, and what I really regret not delaying delivery for, was the AMD Ryzen processor. It's not a big deal today, though it is in some instances, but I feel like as software updates continue to be released and more new features are added, I'm going to heavily regret not waiting for that processor because the Intel Atom processors in Teslas right now are really starting to show the rage and hit their limit with what they can do. And I think uh, in the not so distant future, new software updates are going to come and new features are going to come that you just can't get on Intel Atom Teslas. And I'll show you a couple of demos here on screen of some side-by-side -side comparisons with the Intel Atom-based Teslas and the Ryzen-based processors in newer Teslas. Obviously, you can see there is an inherent speed difference. And as we've seen more and more software updates roll out lately, I've heard anecdotally from owners who have these new cars that the Ryzen-based Teslas just feel way faster. Things are snappier, there's less lag, there's less jitter, things just seem to be overall better. And if these rumors are true of Tesla launching their own app store and more cameras being added or hardware for all these new things, they're all going to require more processing power. The brains of the car need to be upgraded. And uh, with the Intel Atom cars we've had for a number of years, they're sort of starting to hit their limit while these Ryzen-based processors are more powerful and also have sort of more future-proofing in them so that when these new updates come, they have the headroom to run these new things that uh, might not be the case for the Intel Atom-based Teslas. For example, we saw owners of Model S's and Model X's who spent well over $100,000 on their car not being able to take advantage of new features due to the orientation of their display or that they had a older hardware computer inside. Cars that were just, you know, well over six figures uh, not that long ago, now uh, missing a lot of key features that are found in cars half the price, just because a little chip in the car was different. Um, not saying it's gonna happen tomorrow, but I think definitely in the next 12 to 18 months, we're gonna see a bigger difference between Ryzen-based Teslas and Intel-based Teslas, and uh, I definitely wish I would've waited, but my impatience got the better of me. Another regret I do have, and one that I think about on a somewhat regular basis, is not going with white seats. This, I think, again, is another $1,000 price increase, uh, but I have seen a number of beautiful combos of the red with the white interior, especially sort of the Stormtrooper look with the black exterior and the white interior. Uh, I have a nine-month-old daughter, so I opted not to go with the white seats because I was afraid of what would happen to white seats with a baby. And uh, let me just give you a live look. I have not cleaned out the back of my car, so let's see. Uh, there's the car so you can see where the mayhem goes down. And it's not too bad. Everything's pretty clean back here. Um, but I would have loved uh, sort of the look of the white seats and sort of what you would get with that. Um, it just would have sort of given a different look to the car and you would have had a different trim. You'd have the white uh, sort of soft touch material instead of the wood. This is my second time with the black interior. I had the same on my Model 3. And I think that on my next Tesla, whenever that happens to be, whether it's Cybertruck or whatever, I think I will go with the white just to experience it. The black is very nice, really comfortable seats, uh, no complaints. And again, it's gonna show uh, some dirt more than white, but you've got, uh, you know, um, worry about white and transfer from jeans and stuff like that. So don't have that much of that with the black. I will say though, if you're someone like me who wears a lot of sunscreen, you do get the sunscreen residue on here that I have to clean up. But anyways, um, I'm a fan of the black seats, but I do regret not going with the white seats. I think it would have been a nice combo and uh, something I would have loved to have done on this car, but I will have to do next time. My next big regret, which I'm currently in the process of trying to rectify, is my home charging situation. I've done a couple of videos here on this channel about uh, having no home charger and how unfun that is to live with, and also uh, slower trickle charging situations than a sort of higher end, faster charging situations with the NEMA 1450 plug. Uh, in my old place, I had a nice uh, NEMA 14 something plug. It wasn't 1450, but something similar that gave me a nice uh, constant stream of power to my car. I could easily recharge. It was great. Loved it. it I was 
living the dream or the electric dream, I should say, uh, with home charging. When I moved back in the spring, I moved to a new place that does not have any home charger or I should say any, um, you know, higher end, uh, high voltage plug in the garage. I did have access to a regular 120 volt plug, but that was it. So for the last four ish months, five months, I have been trickle charging. And let me tell you right now, it's not fun, not fun at all. Obviously your experience with trickle charging and your mileage here will literally vary based on your driving habits. But I can tell you, if you're working from home primarily and you're not really going out a lot of places, then keeping the car always plugged in and trickle charging isn't that big of a deal. But if I'm in a situation where I'm doing a lot of driving day in and day out, or especially back to back and the car doesn't get enough time to trickle charge and recharge, then you are going to be in for uh, a lot of unfortunate trips to the supercharger or some other uh, charging situation because it just charges so slowly. Obviously, it is better than nothing, but after living with trickle charging, I can tell you it's just not as convenient. But I will say if you plan to stay in your current residence or you have the ability to put one in or you're going to own the Tesla for at least the next couple of years or you know any electric car, uh, it definitely is worth it having a way to charge it efficiently and speedily at home. Trickle charging is okay. I'm doing it right now. It's fine, uh, but it's certainly not ideal. And I do regret not getting a home charging solution or a faster home charging solution uh, sooner, uh, but hopefully I'll an update on that in the not so distant future. Stay tuned. Uh, hopefully some good news coming soon. Now, regret number four is a lesson I learned the hard way with my Model 3 and one I did not repeat on the Model Y, and that was cheaping out on accessories. You can go on Amazon and random sites online and find dozens and dozens of different accessories, but let me tell you, honestly, you do get what you pay for, and after trying a lot, um, I can tell you a lot of them are just plain junk and uh, not worth your time, money, or effort at all. And I'm actually going to be doing a full video soon on my top accessories for 2022 on the Model 3 and Model Y. I'll leave a link to that down below once it's live, but for now, here's sort of a sneak peek at what I'm rocking in my car. I've got a Magback wireless charger. I've got a Spigen anti-glare screen protector, 3D mats in all areas of the car, including some extra protection in the back, and I've got my performance foot pedals, of course, of links to everything linked down down below. All right, to my last regret, something I ponder sometimes in the dead of night and think about when I'm driving my car is not getting the performance model. When I ran the numbers on this before some of the price increases back in the fall of last year, the price difference wasn't all that much. I think it was less than $100 a month all in to go from a long range to performance model. And with that, you get the bigger wheels, you get the better brakes, the suspension, all that stuff. Um, it would have been nice, but I opted just to not do it. And um, I regret it on some days, and then I don't regret on other days. Uh, for, to me, I think it's the Uber turbine wheels. They just look so good, and I would have liked that little extra performance. 70% of days, I do regret not going performance, but hey, long range, I'm not gonna complain. All right, so I'm curious, what are your thoughts on the Model 3 and Model Y right now? I know a lot of you guys are Tesla owners, so let me know down below, what are your thoughts on your car? What do you like? What don't you like? What are your favorite features? What's your favorite hidden feature? And what problems have you had with your car, maybe when you took delivery like with me, and did the Tesla fix those issues or not? Let me know your thoughts down below, and also for my fellow Model Y owners out there, how you're liking the car, what color combo did you go with on the inside and the outside, what wheels do you have, and uh, what aftermarket upgrades have you made? I'm curious show me. I wish I could show pictures in the comments. Just describe it down below in the comments. We can get uh, excited together and uh, we can nerd out on our Tesla enthusiasm together down below. As always, I appreciate you guys watching these videos. Thank you so much. I'm Robert Rosenfeld and I'll see you all in the next one.